Can Overthrow Disc Golf coach me to a 900 rated round at New London Longs? Well, can they? I don't know. <laughs> Spin it. <laughs>
So formulating the game plan and the approach to being successful at New London Longs was two things primarily. Stay away from the OB. So yeah, <laughs> something that just stays left. Well, the OB lining right side as well. So anytime you're okay. grabbing something faster as a lefty, you're bringing in fade that you don't need. Dude. Not a problem though. Uh, I mean, if you're avoiding the right side, yeah. you're expecting, okay, I'm gonna finish left okay. or middle at best. Yeah. Yeah, this is you don't play you don't play with this OB line. Uh, OB right side again. Okay. You might as well chance going left. Okay. Then mess with OB right. It's okay. Just, and get distance up the fairway when we're scrambling. Right. And then we go to the game plan of distance up the fairway once we get inside there. Okay. The mantra is when you're in scramble mode, dis do the shot that guarantees distance up the fairway. Okay. Distance up the fairway next time for me. Yeah. Now, there is a lot of OB in the first six or seven, eight, nine, ten holes. Primarily the first seven, though. Primarily the first seven holes at New London Tech. So the first goal for me was off the tee, stay away from OB. We need to throw tee shots that did not get me in trouble that minimize the OB strokes. This is where I found the Bearcat. One you have more. a mid? I do a have a mid. mid. Did I bring my Bearcat? I did. As the best thing you can get. So do we do the Bearcat again? I think I'm gonna go back with that Bearcat. Yep. All right, we're going Bearcat off the- Bearcat. Bearcat yeah, off this the- Yeah, probably your bear disc again. <laughs> That's it. That's the shot. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's try the bear disc. Yeah. Yes. Oh, you can commit to so much hyzer with that disc. Okay. Turn. Oh, you juiced it. I did. Chill. Sit down. <laughs> That's going to be so close to OB. <laughs> There it is. That's it. Yeah, chill. Nice. Yeah, before that Friday, I had never thrown a Bearcat. It was one of the newer, the newest disc in my Lone Star bag. As a matter of fact, I don't throw flippy discs at all. I tend to throw more stable, overstable molds just because my angle control is absolute garbage. So I had to learn how to angle control my tee shots and throw hyzer flip to turnovers because I was doing it all day long. It's a little rigid. That's going to be fine. It is growler. <laughs> Great shot. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, that's a great miss. Okay. You know, it doesn't put the disc behind you. There you go. Clean. Okay. Yeah. All right. Nice. So my Bearcat, my Lariat, and my Growler became my new best friends because those are pretty much the only, with the exception of hole 14, I believe, <clears throat> okay, you were right. I'll take Mad Cat. Okay. Those were the only discs I was using off the tee. Again, this was new for me uh, and something I wasn't expecting, but we have to learn how to adapt when we're playing this game in order to improve ourselves. The next thing I wanted to bring up is we formulated a plan for every tee shot on the course, hole one through 18 and I have them all written down. And this was the warning from Josh to me about once I have my tee shot set for my tournament prep. He's gonna put it in his notes Yeah. <laughs> right now, right right after this. It's in the notes, he's not changing it tomorrow not, no matter what. No deviation. not now. That's right, no deviation, I've been warned. Do not deviate. If you go out and you're prepping for a tournament, get your tee shot set and do not deviate. Now we talked a little bit about conditions. What if it were windy or what if it were less windy? What if it were raining? 
then the deviation is stable to over, understable in the same speed, not changing discs completely, not changing from backhand to forehand, changing stability. Uh, fortunately, I did not have to do that, and we'll talk about that when I talk with Josh a little bit later. So I have my game plan, I have my strategy, I have my tee shots. The last thing that we went over is my mind space on the tee, my tee shot routine, if you, if you will. And this is where these tips come in. Josh told me, minimize what you have to think about on the tee box. Nose over toes, hyzer, flip it up. Don't th yeah, don't think about all that. That's the only thing in your routine that you're thinking about, really. It's okay. like the feel of the hand and the head staying down. Okay. He told me I need to think about two things. Keeping my head down. Just keep your eyes back. Whatever is in your routine that helps you not lift your head up. When you do your routine, keep your head down. Keep your head down and committing my hand to the line. There you go. Now you commit the hand there. Target acquisition, commit the hand. Commit the hand. Yeah, you've got to commit your hand basically to this tree. Yep. Send the hand all the way through forward. This is what we spent all Friday doing. Setting up my tee shots, making sure my mindset was right to stay away from OB, getting distance up the fairway when we were scrambling, and making sure my tee shot routine was simple and precise. How did I do? Well, let's take it down to Lynchburg and see. All right, so here we are after the tournament. Do you like you? Because am I going to tell them what I shot right out the gate? Yeah. Uh, am I? Yeah. Okay. And did he meet his goal? No. Plus 24. Miss it by three. So miss it by three. Three shots worse. Uh, yeah, we talked about a couple things. Uh, this part of tournaments is super important the post-op of tournaments. You've got to find out, did you fail the game plan or did the game plan fail you, right? So that's really important. You want to find out where your mistakes were. Um, obviously, you can't solve all of your problems in one go. So a um, couple things that I'd like to point out. To Bunky here, uh, DisMD, what do they call you on the channel? Bunky. Okay. <laughs> he calls me Mark. It's okay. You can yeah, call okay. me Mark on the channel too. Yeah, a couple things uh, for Mark here. First, tee shots. I was a stickler about this before breakfast this morning. I wanted to make sure I saw it, that, I, that we got it in right in. Got it. That's nice. I got it in right in. Right. right. Now the question is, is is there anything here where the tee shots, bad ideas, will we change anything, or do we just not execute? So one thing I told Mark beforehand is, you want a game plan, and the game plan just gives you the best shot at hitting your goal. It's not like it guarantees that you're going to, oh, I've got a perfect game plan, therefore I, I don't understand how I didn't shoot my goal. My game plan was perfect, right? You have to go out and execute the thing. So this game plan, I think probably, Gets them anywhere from, I don't know, plus 10 to plus 40. Who knows? So you gotta find out, okay, maybe was the game plan not so good here or there? Do we make adjustments or is it just execution? It was execution. <laughs> it was execution. So I, I, I don't think, thinking back, I went, I, we, we, question, we talked about this, we questioned 17 a little bit. Um, whether I go Bearcat or Lariat there, but the shot shape dictated you wanted to stay left and not right. So no, walking through all the tee shots, the game plan was solid. Like I, I wouldn't have changed, I wouldn't have changed one of them. I yeah. think they were each one of these. Those were the shots that I needed to play. Mm -hmm. So yeah, tee shots by far the most important, uh, and I can say that as someone who does tee shots well, and the rest of it, well, <laughs> the green part not so well. Then we get these these three things that you guys already saw on the back of this, right? These are execution dealios here. Yeah. And we say, okay, did this save us strokes? I, I can't put everything that's wrong on a card. I just want to put, okay, if we have to focus, if we have to think about just a couple things here and there, ideally, you'd be amazing, your form would be great, and you wouldn't have to think. You'd just be, I'm going to put the disc there. Yeah and then it goes, yeah. um, but the rest of us Which have to make adjustments, right? And so these are the adjustments that I thought he would have to consciously make that he run into these issues based off the practice round. So we talked about this 
earlier in the video, lifting my head. I, I think I did well on that today. Like there was a handful of shots where I can, I, I, I know when I pulled my head out of the shot. So, but for the most part, I would say 70%, mm -hmm. 70% my head was in the shot. Yeah. And it's more important, like on hole two, I missed early for a shot, <laughs> but my next that? throw, I didn't make the same mistake again. Right? right. So it's more important that he, he goes and doesn't make the same mistake twice. We expect all sorts of misses, but can you adjust? Right. And I think that there was a decent amount of adjusting. There was. Right. There that, was. That's what you can hope for. There that was. makes a difference in most game plans. Well, with the head down, I, I, I probably made that adjustment better. The next one was my problem child today. Mm -hmm. If I would have to pin my bad tee shots on my misses between keeping my head in and committing my hand to the line. Committing my hand to the line was certainly more difficult for me today. And I did not adjust well. So it was I'm maybe 50-50. Yeah. It was not a good day for that. Yeah, again, we'd like to, as few cues in physical, mechanical things going through our head as possible. I had two. I had two. Yeah. Yeah, two, <laughs> which is more than you usually want. I mean, you have to learn to adjust, but uh, it's really easy when you're thinking about what's happening here, like within your body, to not pay attention to the arrows down the lane, right? So you've got to be able to take that, and this is something that is different for everyone, but you've got to be able to take that cue. If I'm throwing at you guys, if I'm here and I'm trying to get my hand through my line, and I'm trying to throw at you as my initial target, for me, there's a very real moment where I feel here, where I can see this in my mind. I can see this like turned away. I'm not looking forward, but I know my hand, my disc are going that direction to where I'm aiming. It's hard to, uh, you know, Stokely said, I can't teach you to aim. And at first I was kind of like, nah. and it's like, okay, I get it. It's like, it's a little bit different for everyone. So there's a mechanical thing that makes it so, you know, you're not lifting your head up. So you're not changing your line all over the place. And then there's this mental aspect of actually committing and going through, which of course, when there's a bunch of pressure, it's tougher to do. We expect that to happen. Yeah. He's got to go home and figure out what is this kind of is committing my is my hand through the line kind of the best cue. He's got to put himself in this situation a couple more times, right? So he can make this adjustment more quickly. Yeah. And if you make that adjustment on hole nine, like by hole nine instead of by hole, when did you make the adjustment? Maybe it was never like fully. Yeah, maybe it was like never. I never did. I never did. And sometimes it's yep. hit or miss, I right? Never did. But if you make the adjust, if he makes the adjustment, you know, a couple holes earlier, there's his three strokes. Yeah. Right. Hole yeah. seventeen, for example. Yeah. Like you could have had a couple on seventeen, I think. So. So what, now that we're off the tee box, second shot to the hole. One of the things that we had discussed earlier was once once we get off the tee box. It's make, gaining distance, right? It's all about gaining distance to the basket, making the smart shot, playing percentages, taking the bigger gap, just making it as far up the fairway and staying clear of OB as you can, right? So did I do that well today? Uh, I, I think I did. Um, I think mentally I was making smart choices with my shots, uh, taking gaps that I probably should have taken. Out of these things, like executing these things just a little bit better gets you there. Yeah. Like, yeah. so I think that's probably the biggest thing is like, there are other things that you can chunk off, but in order to hit that 900 mark, it's not that many things. Yeah. It's just executing, adjusting a little quicker to the things that we already knew. It's yeah. not like anything was surprising. So, but after that, there are always things that go somewhere further on the list where it's like, okay, take your time. Get your pre-shot routine for everything, right? That's where you start committing yeah. to your shots. 30 seconds is forever. If you sit out there, if you have not done it, next Do time it. you're out playing, Do it. count out loud 30 seconds and put everything you can think of in your routine. Yeah. And you'll be shocked by the time you get to 15 seconds. You're like, come on, yeah. let me throw the thing. <laughs> well, we had a tee shot where I, I, I told you that headwind was messing with me a little bit and you said, you have 30 seconds. And I probably only took like 16 of them. So I, if that, yeah, it, yeah. it was, it was, it was quick. So yeah, he's absolutely right. Yeah. I probably felt like you guys probably felt like I was taking forever compared to you. 
My special compared to Jason. Yeah. That guy's fast. <laughs> that guy's lightning quick. That's right, I got none on him. Yeah, other than that, there are just a couple like technical things he's gotta work on his like chip forehands. Aiming. Yeah, like just short making like short sure. Aims. Yeah, all yeah. this is kind of in conjunction with taking your time, owning, yeah. yep. making sure that you're not looking at the basket, you're looking at your aim point yeah. that gets your disc to the basket in the end. Yep. So it's all kind of similar. Yeah. I think the game plan was good. Just a little better on a day and you would have hit your you would have hit your goal. The biggest thing that I would encourage him with and with you guys with is when you have the mindset of adjusting during the round, you oftentimes get into this feeling of like like I blew it, mm -hmm. absolutely blew it. And then you check in and you're on a whole nine and you're like, I got no shot. I have to shoot like probably 500 on this back nine. And if you had looked, you'd be like, oh, <laughs> I'm right on track. Okay. I'm right on track. <laughs> this is important. I'm like, if you want to improve your game, if you want to get better, this is important. Like you writing this out this morning and handing it to me like, oh, okay, I can do that. And then, I don't have to think about my tee shots because we wrote them all down. So like stuff like this helps us become better players. So, and then doing this type of stuff helps us to know what to adjust. If everybody has the same amount of time, it's the people who use it better. It's the person who's more intentional with it, right? This is the stuff that you can do. It doesn't take that long. You can do it at night. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> don't be mentally lazy, right? right? That's where you can gain a lot of strokes on people right here. Well, guys, I, I hope this helped. Uh, I know it helped me. If you guys want something like this, hit Overthrow's Patreon. They have coaching available. I'm highly recommending. Kai Josh has been coaching me for almost a year now. It's been wow. eight months. Really? Eight or nine months. Okay. Nine months. Nine months. Nine months. So, uh, and I can tell you in that nine months, it's a drastic improvement. So, if you want a, t a testimonial, you got one here. Go hit up Overthrow. Get onto their Patreon. Josh knows what he's doing. And I'm adjusting. Yeah, all the time. We're all adjusting. All the We're time. all getting better. All the time. So, okay. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. And as always, enjoy the journey. Here's your first of the day. Here's your day.